Election day is one week from today and voters in Aurora will decide their next mayor. Three candidates are on the ballot incumbent Mike Hoffman, Juan Marcano and Jeff Sanford. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon talked to the two candidates who are leading the race when it comes to fundraising. It's been a handful. For the past four years, Mayor Mike Kaufman has led Aurora. Even though it's a suburb, it really has the urban challenges of, of race, poverty, and crime. Kaufman wants to win another four years as mayor. Colorado has typically been thought of as a purple state, but in the last midterm elections, the state voted pretty heavily blue. Are you at all concerned being a Republican going into this election? You know, I'm really not because simply because, you know, I'm happy, I'm, I'm still registered Republican, I'm happy not to be engaged in partisan politics. Running against Kaufman is Aurora City Council member Juan Marcano, who spoke with us while door knocking. This is a progressive city, it's a democratic city, it's a diverse city, and I think it re uh, deserves representation to match. Both agree on the three top priorities for the position, homelessness, crime, and affordable housing. I put housing at the top because in order for you to have a safe city, in order for you to be successful in our society, you have to have stable housing first and foremost, period. Kaufman says crime is his first focus and hopes the police department is fully staffed by early next year as a result of accelerating the hiring process. We're seeing the rewards from that right now in much larger classes. Marcano wants to see more sworn officers too, but believes police area representatives, a program emphasizing sensitivity and responsiveness to citizen concerns, should be the foundation of the department. It's much better for us to be able to resolve problems through conversations or intervention because you're in tune with the community. Kaufman also has a plan to combat homelessness in Aurora. It includes creating a court that would not punish unhoused people for low-level crimes if they get into treatments. What is going to be different than Denver is that they're going to be required to do something in exchange for the, for the supports that they get, as opposed to just having the wraparound services there. When it comes to fundraising, Kaufman raised more than $250,000. That's more than double Marcano, who raised just over 100000 In terms of like raw dollars, I expected to be outraised, right? He's, he's been in politics longer than I've been alive, so I can't compete with that Rolodex. Um, but I have something that he doesn't have, and that is grassroots support and genuine support that's local. His top donor is the Service Employees International Union, Local 105. Marcano says it was through their small donor committee meaning it was a combination of no more than $50 per person. One of Kaufman's top donors is the president and CEO of an oil and gas exploration and production company, who will be the next leader of the third largest city in Colorado. Aurora's story is yet to actually be written. Is in the hands of the voters. Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. And there is a third candidate in this race. We heard from Jeff Sanford and in an interview back in August. And you can hear where he stands on the issues right now on our website. Just search his name in the search bar at denver7.com. Well, a number of other cities across Colorado will choose their next leader as well. So let's take a look at those candidates in the order in which they'll appear on the ballot. The city of Boulder will decide among incumbent Aaron Brockett. Nicole Spear, Bob Yates, and Paul Tweedley. In for Collins, incumbent Jenny Arndt is running against right in Patricia Babbitt. Loveland voters will decide on three candidates, incumbent Jackie Marsh, Don Overcash, and Janice Ververs. And finally, Lakewood's candidates for mayor are Wendy Strom, Kathy Kettner, and Don Barkhart. The election comes as Lakewood voters raise concerns about an apartment building planned near Belmar Park. We asked each candidate their thoughts on the project. This project has definitely highlighted the opportunity for the city to do better in a number of er a number of areas. How are we doing zoning around our parks and green spaces is really important and there's obviously room for improvement there. We need public hearings and city council approval for our large development projects, and we should also have inclusionary zoning, a requirement that a certain percentage of units are actually affordable. Part of why I'm even running is the reckless development of Lakewood. I love this park. I'm around it all the time, and I want to protect the, the nature that, that we've been given here to enjoy. You can find our complete one-on-one -on -one interviews with each candidate at denver7.com slash politics. In addition to local elections, voters statewide will see two ballot measures when they head to the polls next week, including Proposition HH, and that plan would reduce property tax increases for, in exchange for smaller Tabor refund checks. And Proposition II, voters will decide if excess revenue collected from higher taxes on tobacco and nicotine products should go to cover the cost of preschool. Denver 7 will keep you informed as Election Day gets closer. You can find voting resources and guides on denver7.com politics.